Welcome to Megabucks Radio. Conversations with successful entrepreneurs. Sharing their tips and strategies for success. Real world ideas that can put Megabucks in your bank account. Here's your host, Nina Hirschberger. Hi, and welcome to the show today. I'm your host, Nina Hirschberger, and today my guest is Keith Lee. Keith started as a sales rep. Uh, you know, Keith, I didn't realize this until I was reading about you. Uh, you started at Thompson Marketing, marking, not marketing services, marking services. Is that? Yep. What, yep. What we, sold hand, <laughs> we sold handheld price marking equipment to retail stores. Ka-chink, 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 the label <laughs> comes out, then you put it on. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, so and, and, and you're like, oh my God. Well, that's a long time ago, of course. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, we we both of us are a little older, but we were more wise because of that. So you started there in 1978, and then you you went on, became general manager, president, and ultimately you bought the business out. And then, you know, in 19 in 2015, you sold that business. Uh, for a lot more money than some people in that business would have sold for. Um, but as I read about you, you actually had grown into about 17 employees and you're pulling your hair out and you said, this isn't any fun. I don't have any time for my family. I don't have any time to do what I want to do. And it was then that you kind of developed your own methodology that small businesses can can take and, and they can run with. But and, and so I want to hear lots of different wisdom from you, but primarily the reason for this particular interview, this particular program today, is we're right in the middle of the con- uh, uh, the, the convict. What do, how do we say convict nineteen? COVID. I pandemic. think it is COVID nineteen. COVID nineteen. You know, here's here's the secret about me. I don't watch television. I haven't Good watched for television <laughs> in 35 years, so I don't even know how to say the word, <laughs> let alone, you know, but I certainly know what, what it is and what's, you know, the impact. So as a gift to me and as, and as a thank you for you getting on this call, I'm going to make sure that small business owners can hear this because the wisdom that you have, that you've learned through all of these is remarkable. And as we talked for a few minutes before we started uh, this recording, you said you've you've been through this a couple times. Why don't we start there? Tell tell. In fact, you thought there were times when it was even worse than what it is now. So let's start there, Keith. And well, for my business, I again I started managing it in 1980 81, and and. <clears throat> became the sole owner in the 90s. So, you know, I don't know what that is. It's almost 40 years. So I've been through some ups and downs. There was a recession in the 80s that was huge. It hit retail hugely. Uh, about a, we, we actually didn't participate in that much at all. And the reason we didn't participate in that one much at all is that we were in a huge growth curve before that because of the marketing that we'd done. We, you know, we sold those handheld price marking guns, etc. And my marketing plan when I came in as general manager was to sell retailers everything they needed to run their businesses. Um, and we added this product and that product and another product, and finally ended up when I did sell it is that we sold more products, more things that retail stores could use to operate their business um, it, when I sold it in 2015 than any other distributor in the country. So. We had, and we were going through that huge growth um, period. So that that one actually wasn't too bad. Um, we just, again, because of the marketing we were doing and the system I'd put in place in management, we didn't we didn't hit that one that bad. Um, um, Nine eleven. Uh, if you can imagine, I was selling to independent retail stores all along this way. As a matter of fact, I was selling to ind- independent retail stores. And if you're my age and can think back to uh, uh, 1981 and how many independent drug stores there were, independent hardware stores, menswear stores, toy stores, etc., and how fast they went out of business, we still continued to grow because of the excellent marketing and management that we did. Okay, But we come up to... Um, um uh, uh 911 and uh if you you if you weren't in retail you maybe don't know this but retail went down the tube 
Um, we had a distribution center in Hawaii, for instance, and if you've ever been to Hawaii and Kalakaua Avenue, uh, which is busier than can be on Waikiki Beach, I ended up going over to that distribution center two weeks after 9-11, and uh, you could have rolled a bowling ball down Kalakaua and not hit anybody. Um, our business went down 30% overnight, and it didn't start climbing again until almost six months later. So that um, – and, and why and, – and, Nina, one of the things I said, I think that I've gone through some things that were tougher than we're going to see here because I don't see this. I see this myself. I see three to four months from now, if you can get through that period of time, that we're going to be back on that growth stage. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a positive guy in, in what was, was happening with the economy before this, and I'm a positive guy in what's going to happen when we get through this. So that's why I, I told you I think I've been through some worse times. Uh, that did not – our customers actually did not come back. Way, I think more of them went our, – our retail businesses that we sold to went out of business there than I think may go out of business here. Now, we're going to have a ton go out of business, but in this case, you've got huge stimuluses for the businesses, too. Uh, that did not happen on 9-11. So I think uh, this is worse. Uh, and then one of the other things that was worse, that was not, 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 maybe I wouldn't put it in the category of worse than this, but um, um, as we went along, we, we had huge, huge, huge uh, amounts of new clients coming in via Google uh um, and search engine and almost all natural search engine because we were super at that stuff. We'd been in it so long. And then Google all of a sudden decides that they're going to make search more local than national. We're a nat we were a national company by that time. We needed national exposure. Um, our, uh, our leads came coming in and went down 50% overnight when they did that. So that was a huge, uh, um, um, change there too, but the good thing, and what Nina, you and I have talked about before that we had going on, is even though our leads in Google and whatever went down fifty percent overnight, we were doing so many other things and doing them well, not relying on one thing. That's one of the things. If, if you're relying on one thing right now and you get through this, make sure you're not relying on one thing of anything as you get to the other end of this. So, yeah, I've been through a couple things. Uh, we got through them, and, um, yeah, and we'll share with some of the, some of the things that we did uh, to get through those. So let's, let's talk about that not depending on one thing. Let's take it down to, well, I'm going to give an example. How about if it's, um, oh, I, you know, an auto repair person or a chiropractor. And let's, let's say the chiropractor. You know, generally they do the adjustment. Um, some of them might have some vitamins, maybe they have a few other things, but that's their primary business. What would you say to a chiropractor in this environment? Well, the first thing, right now, you're, you're in triage mode. You're in emergency room mode. And I would say to any business, and this is what got us through, um, especially that 9-11 um, downturn when, when we had to, we went back to what's called, <clears throat> If you go to school and you do business school, it's called zero-based budgeting. And a lot of times we look at what we're doing now in our expenses and we say, okay, well, we're going to grow 10% next year and we're going to we're, everything, everything we spend our money on is going to grow 10% also. And you do it based on what you've done before. But one of the things you need to do in this environment right now is you need to go back and look at every single thing that you do in your business, and you need to determine if it's critical right now. That doesn't mean you're going to throw it away forever. But you're going to look and see if it's critical right now and can we cut it. And things as simple as, go again, going back to, uh, and this is probably not news for a lot of you, but going back to some of those big um, hits that we took, going, going to, okay, no more, no more janitorial service. We do it all in-house. No more Starbucks coffee. Folgers coffee. I mean, things as simple as that. One of the things that you should be doing right now is going and looking at everything that you're spending money on, determining if it's important or not, um, 
getting rid of those things that are important that won't cut into the meat. You got to cut the fat, not the meat though. Okay. Um, please don't do that. Um, but you cut the fat and the other thing to do is to start chopping those things. We found out, for instance, in one of these, I had an incredible operations manager. This was mainly her job and her team's job to go and and look at everything we spent money on, renegotiate with some of our vendors if we could, look for other vendors. I remember, you know, one of the things we sold back then is we sold a lot of packaging tape to the retailers that would use it for whatever reasons they're using, you know, just same kind of packaging tape you may use at home. We sold a lot of that, and I remember going back, and and we went shopping for that, um, and and we found a new vendor, and the new vendor was way better, and the pricing was lower, too. So it's a great time, especially um, if you have some time. Maybe you're, you're, you're not busy at all. You have the time. It's a great time to go reshop things right now. Don't sit there and woe is me stuff. Go reshop. Go hit your vendors up for for if you can renegotiate that. Find new vendors. Go back and look at everything you're spending money on and determine whether it's important or not. If it's going to cut into the meat, try not to cut it. Um, but if it's cutting any fat whatsoever, get rid of it, uh, bring things in house. If you're big enough, you've got to, I'm sorry to say this, but you've got to lay people off. That's the key. If that's where I remember nine 11 and, um, and uh, my operations manager, my number two person in the business, uh, we had four distributions, just had, this is how important she was to me. We had four distribution, um, uh, big warehouse places across the western U.S., um, and she ran everything in those. She was in charge of everything in all four of those except for sales, marketing, and IT uh, support. She had a ton of responsibility. She came into my office and she said, Keith, are we going to get through this? I said, I don't know, Mary. I have no idea if we're going to get through this or not. Um, if you have another opportunity where you, that's a job that you might want to leave to, you might want to go there. Um, that's, that's where we were. But we put her on this. We, we cut the fat. We, I had, it was the worst day of my life when I laid off 20 people. Um, I'm sorry. Um, geez, that came from nowhere. Um, it was we we had sixty people. We laid off twenty. I I, I despise that day, but you got to do it. You got to do it. And now and now look at look how much easier that is now. We're just going over that um, in some of the stimulus stuff. You've got to know what's going on. That's the other thing. You need to know what is out there. Whether you need help from a bookkeeper or an accountant or whatever, Nina, I will. Um, there's some information out there on employee. Uh, for instance, you know, if you, if you, um, send somebody home, there, there's just so much going on. I'm not going to get, try to get into the details here because I'm going to mess them up and they may change tomorrow. Who knows? But there is a lot of stuff going on out there right now from the stimulus stuff. I'm not a huge fan of everything that's in that by any means, but there is some really good stuff for your employees where, you know, when I laid them back, off back then after 9-11, there wasn't any of that stuff. They got normal unemployment. They had to wait two weeks. They had all that stuff. Well, this time around, unemployment is immediate. Um, there's, uh, from what I understand, uh, it may be too high, in my opinion, for what they're going to get. We may not get people back to work, but you know, it's not nearly the, I wouldn't, let's put it this way, I wouldn't have that emotional response of laying people off today that I had back then, because there is such a safety net there for people getting laid off. There's safety nets there for people who are um, out sick, or they're sick um, <clears throat> um, with something that, that a normal cold, it's not corona, but you send them home because you're uh, you're thinking it may be uh, corona. Uh, there's 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 options to, for um, SBA loans that are, from what I understand, are going to be almost immediate uh, to go ahead and pay those people. Um, and then, from what I understand, the government is going to actually reimburse you for up to two weeks of their pay at home. So so take advantage. Number one, look at what you can do yourself in your own business to. Uh, 
to um, go back to zero base budgeting, renegotiate, find new vendors, all of those different things that you can do, and then make sure you know what's happening with the stimulus stuff. You got to you got to spend some time there. Um, Again, uh, some of that will mean some cash out of your pocket, uh, but a lot of it is going to be reimbursed by the government. Um, um, and um, the unemployment is not going to be nearly what it was before. So don't, don't get too crazy here as far as your response. Um, I think we're going to be back. We're going to be back, and we're going to be learn more, and we're going to be stronger. So, okay, terrific advice, absolutely terrific advice. Um, and we know that there are going to be some businesses and probably quite a few that will go out of business. But after a business owner has done that, they've gone through their expenses, they've had to lay people off, they've checked the stimulus and stuff. Would you see them changing even their business? I mean, is there, I mean, like, I mean, go back to my chiropractor. Should he have, he have a online vitamin store? I mean, what, what do you see that way? Yeah, well, basically what you need to do now and at all times, this is so huge at all times, and this is a great um, opportunity to take this and, and, and learn this and for future times. One of the things, Nina, you and I are a part of a marketing group, and I, I mentioned to you in the past that the biggest thing that I've learned in that marketing group is to do lots of stuff. Try lots of different things. Um, see what fails. Uh, tweak it. If it still fails, dump it. Um, there was a big a book out a while back, Fail Faster. It's it's important to fail. It's important to try things and fail. But along the way, you're going to find some things that work and do tons of different things in your business and, and, and be out there and try to tons of ways to find people, tons of ways to, to service people, et cetera, et cetera. I'll give you a quick example of this. I have a mastermind group up here in the Seattle area. We have a photographer that's in that group. Well, because he tries so many things, um, the guy is crazy. I mean, most photographers um, are barely getting by. This guy does fabulous. Um, and to give you an example, uh, his son has worked in the business. His son now, because this guy does a lot of work with commercial people, also in his photography, and his son um, has, is kind of a Facebook guru, and they work together. His son brings people in for the for the photography. The photography brings things in for the son, and then all of a sudden he he finds out that hey, the city of Renton is uh, looking for some marketing people to help them. He is right now in the in the finals in, uh, of one of three people left for a two hundred thousand dollar a year. Um, contract with the city to do their marketing. A lot of that marketing will be photography and video, which he's great at. They're bringing in the marketing with Josh. Can you imagine that? That's, this is coming from a photographer, a guy that most people, but because he does so many different things, and it doesn't happen over, I mean, he doesn't do so many th different things in one day, overnight. He's always looking for things, and I think that's critical that, uh, that we're doing that in our business all the time. And I'll give you a couple examples of that that have happened just to me since the Corona thing happened. We do a we have a, a group up here in, in the Seattle area where we have our our monthly power lunch and we talk about marketing um, and and we 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 teach people marketing we mastermind marketing we talk about a lot of marketing in, in that mastermind in that power lunch group um, and we meet at a local restaurant we we buy lunch and we talk about marketing well restaurants closed <clears throat> what do we do we do a Zoom meeting. And I'm and my son runs that group, and I'm kind of the I'm kind of the secondary runner, if you will. I, I, I he 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 leads it, and I put in a lot of input also. So we're on the Zoom meeting, and 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 he's doing this meeting, and I can see the faces of the people in the meeting, and they're paying attention as much to that Zoom meeting. They're nodding their heads and saying, wow, okay, good, good. They're doing that as much in the Zoom meeting as they were doing it in the um, in the face-to-face uh, -face meeting, in the, in, the, in the lunch. And I'm thinking, wow, we're really getting through to them, even though this is via Zoom. Well, my son has a, we both have two different businesses. He does marketing consulting. I do management consulting. He has about 5,000 people a, 
on his mailing list. Well, his is bigger than my that. I have about 5,000 on mine. Um, we decided that we're going to start doing monthly uh, power lunches via Zoom and invite our uh, our people from both of those lists in. We'll probably do a couple for free to start with and get people to see whether they like it or not. And then we're going to make that a profit center for us. That would not have happened without this. Look for the opportunities in your business now. Keep your eyes open. Look for the opportunities. We, I, we would. We, that's something that I, I just had. We might have thought of it, but when did we think of it? We thought of it now because we had to do some different things in our business and we kept our eyes and ears open. And it's like, wow, that's awesome. Uh, another one, um, you and I both have a, a friend and a, and a colleague, Lee Miltier. Um, I, I have a monthly membership group of people that follow me mainly for my leadership and uh, it's a subscription thing and for my leadership and customer service and I have this management system that I talked to that we've talked that you mentioned there um, and when I first started making that management system available and I wanted to have a monthly uh, continuity a monthly subscription a monthly membership if you will where people could continue to learn about that after they invested in the system. When I started putting that together, I thought, what, what is really important in my life as a business owner? I, I knew I wanted my leadership and management stuff. I knew I wanted my customer service stuff because that's what I was teaching myself. But then I went back and I said, what was really, what, what really made a huge difference to me? And it was the mindset stuff. It was all of that, um, you know, proper thinking, not stinking thinking. I was, I was, I was just blessed in 1978 when I went to work as that sales rep, um, that the owner of the business, Dick Thompson was a huge lifetime learner way before that term was ever used by anyone. Um, we went into a place called video training centers every Monday morning at seven o'clock. We watched videos on these big one inch wide <laughs> tape player type things. Um, and I watch, we watch Zig Ziglar, Tom Hopkins, uh, Dwyer, um, oh God, I could go on and on if I, it, but I'm drawing a blank now. But I had all of those people that I was list, that I listened to. And there's no way at 28 years old when I became the general manager of Thompson Marking Service that I would have been I would have had the self-confidence to do that without surrounding me by that kind of information. Well, so all that leads up to, that's what Lee does. Lee does all of that. She, 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 she brings all of those guys kind of stuff together and then gives it out to people. So what I did when I started my, my subscription thing is I, I, I had everybody who is on that also gets the subscriptions to Lee. Miltier's Millionaire Smarts Program. Well, that's a long story. <laughs> Sorry about the long story, but it leads up to this. So Lee uh, contacts me last week. Uh, actually, probably just earlier this week, I guess Monday. She contacts me Monday and she says, Keith, I think um, people really need the mindset stuff right now. They really need it. Why don't we do a Zoom meeting um, and... And let's talk about the mindset stuff. Uh, I'd love to share some stuff with with people on your list and the, the, your, the people you work with. And so we're doing this um, <clears throat> uh, tomorrow on Friday. We're having a, a webinar, a Zoom meeting, if you will. And Lee is going to share her wisdom on the mindset that you need right now, having a clear head in order to get through this. Now, so I'm thinking, wow. You know what? I need to get, again, Lee's Millionaire Smarts program is part of my overall program. But one of the things I've been wanting to do, because I know a lot of people don't need all, all, my overall program, but everybody needs this mindset stuff. So what we're going to do is we'll do that, and then I'll invite people to um, get uh, uh, Lee stuff for free for a couple months and then ask them if, you know, after they're done with that, if you want to keep going on this, we're going to charge you X amount of dollars per month, and are you going? Or is that something you want to do? So, so again, but that came up because keeping your eyes open, 
Okay, keeping your eyes open. Let's share this. Okay, and and we're not we can't share it forever. We can't Lee's Lee's, Lee's not a charity. <laughs> she can't she can't share her monthly stuff that that she teaches people forever for free. But we can certainly help them get through this. And then if they want to continue with that down the road. Now again, that's two different profit centers that may end up being good for us going down the road because during this time we kept our eyes open. And we not only kept our eyes open, but we were surrounded by other people that generated ideas for us, if you will. You know, we had our our power lunch people and our mastermind people were we, we would have never done that Zoom meeting if we didn't have them, and we would have never come up with that idea if we didn't have them. We would have never done this this um, call call tomorrow that where we're going to share, I'm sure, great stuff from Lee um, if I hadn't had the relationship with Lee already. And that's one of the key, one of the huge things is um, is is make sure that your your parts of groups of whatever you can find and whether it's you know in our area with our marketing or whatever if it's uh, people that uh, you know the our big marketing group that you and I belong to Nina or just or you and you knowing me and me knowing you <laughs> okay um I Mike Capuzzi I don't <laughs> you're you're a good friend of his um I'm a good friend of his I just got off the phone this morning with him now this didn't come because of the coronavirus it came because of the networking and Mike and I are going to be doing a project together that will hopefully lead to money in our pockets you know I'm talking to business people here so this is not just about uh being a nice person this is about putting money in your pocket but that is also going to start off as you know hey free stuff for instance for for them um, give them some free information and you know what if you want to know more about this and be part of it it'll cost you some money going forward but the only way that you get that kind of uh, synergy is not the right word it's more than synergy yeah um the only way you come up with those things is to be active be active in um, whatever it takes. Um, again, marketing groups, chamber of commerce, uh, BNI, whatever it is for you. Uh, be active. Keep your head and follow people that. Here's here's another one. <laughs> follow good people. I'm not talking about good business people. I'm talking about good people. Nina, if anybody. Um, if anybody I have needs your services, I can say, go use Nina. Um, she's fabulous. She always over delivers. Surround yourself with good people. Mike Capuzzi, um, I just sent out something even after this call. <laughs> Mike, Mike had something going on and I says, whoa, Mike, can I invite my people to go to, to, to that, uh, with you next Tuesday? So got off the phone with him an hour later. I sent out a, uh, email to, uh, a small group of my people and said, hey, Mike's got this thing going on next week. He can't take very many people in it, but, um, He's the kind of guy you want to be around. He's a good person. So when you surround yourself with good people that you can um, you can refer people to, it's going to come back to you too. Um, and and just surround yourself with good people. I don't know. I'm going on and well, on. You know what? <laughs> what is, you know, on this, is this is no, this is perfect. I mean, what you're t- kind of talking about, what we would say is a joint venture. Now, you want a joint venture with good people. But again, if I come back to a local business, I love the photography, you know, analysis. So they didn't look at themselves as just being a photographer. They transitioned themselves to be marketers. Yep. You know, anytime you're going to do any kind of assets in a marketing realm, you've got to have pictures, you've got to have videos. Oh, we know how to do that. Instead of thinking of themselves, I'm a photographer. I can't be a marketer. No, oh, that's what you're saying. Expand your thoughts. Um, what if you want to go? Let's go back to that chiropractor because I, I have a chiropractor right now in our group, in our marketing group, and he he was doing what every chiropractor does: going to work, keeping his head down, trying trying some local advertising, trying this, that, and the other thing, and 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 you know, getting the same results that every other chiropractor got. And then he joined our group. And, um, and, and he's getting these different ideas. 
And now, all of a sudden, he's looking at, and again, this comes from being around people where you can get ideas. You know, I could maybe give some ideas here, but for instance, one of the things he'd, he'd never done is he, he never did a newsletter, a monthly newsletter to his, to his patients. He decided he was going to follow our advice, do a monthly newsletter. Now, all of a sudden, it's like, oh my gosh. And the newsletter is not selling stuff. There's a little bit of stuff in there. I think there's, I think his last one was eight pages and there was a half a page that said, here's some specials, da 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 da, and maybe another half a page on, and he is a supplement guy, so maybe another half a page on that, but seven out of eight pages were great information that people could use, um, that had to do with staying healthy. Um, so and Steve, he, I gotta he, stop you there. Was it a printed newsletter or was it, it an e-newsletter? No, it was a printed newsletter. There it's you a go. printed newsletter. Okay, uh, nobody reads e-newsletters. Okay, you oh, may not but be able Steve, to. Send... It's too expensive. It's too oh expensive yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you may not be able to send out as many, but people will read them. Oh my gosh, yeah. I, it's I, I I I just cannot tell you how important it is to communicate with your existing clients, your existing list, your existing patients, whatever it is. And and in many cases, I, I've been, when I sold my big business, American Retail Supply, we were on, um, what was it, edition 23 of my newsletter. Um, what edition 23 meant was that I'd been doing it for 23 years. Oh, my free newsletter monthly now we were a bigger business but you can you can run you can do this to 100 people you can do it to 50 people you can do it to 500 people we were doing 10,000 a month free newsletters to our now we were a pretty big business 23rd year of that okay um and and here's what the newsletter was about the newsletter was was and I and I told people in it many times this is why I'm sending you this newsletter I want you to be better retailers so in this newsletter I'm going to give you ideas of being a better newsletter of doing better newsletters of being a better retailer now one of the things I was passionate about my entire life well my entire business life was customer service I won't get into why there there is a there is a time when it, there is a why as to why I did that, but I've been passionate about customer service. So what I would share with them primarily, and this is crazy because it led to my business that I'm in now, okay, but what I would share with them is, a, is mostly a lot of marketing and customer service ideas for their business. So we would have, a, I had a four-page newsletter that went out at 11 by 17, folded over into a self-mailer, 11 by 17, so most, about three pa- of the four pages was was things on on how to how to be a better retailer, how to attract more people to your to your stores, how to get them to come back more often. And I told them right in the newsletter I, uh, why I was sending it to them. Number one, if you're a better retailer, if you have more customers, you'll need more of my products. That's why I'm sharing this with you. And the second reason I'm sharing this with you is if I keep co- contacting you when you think of something new you need in your business, you'll likely contact me. And by the way, the third red rare time reason I'm sharing this with you is I'm going to put some stuff in here you can buy. So I just write up front with them. I, I want to make you, I want to, I just, the reason I'm sending this to you is to give you this information for you to be a better retailer. The reason I'm sending that now, if you're the chiropractor and you're sending him, like Dr. Siegfried did in this last newsletter, if you're the chiropractor and you're sending them a newsletter on heart health, it's pretty obvious why you're sending it to them. You want them to be healthier, okay? But you also put in a few few things that you can sell them. And by the way, who are they going to think of when they need vitamins or an adjustment or whatever? Um, flip your marketing. Flip your marketing budget um, from spending so much money on getting new patients, new clients. You got to spend some there, no doubt about it. You got to spend some money on that, but you got to spend uh, uh, more money. Maybe not more money. Most people have to spend more money than they're spending right now on keeping existing clients and getting them to spend more front with you and giving you referrals. By the way, if I'm giving you all of this great information on how to run your business better, 
and you're talking to someone else who sells the same, who buys the same stuff because they're the retailer next door, and they and you're talking, and all of a sudden now they're talking about American retail supply. I love those guys. They don't just want my money; they want to help me too. Here's the cool thing about that. Um, after a while, that the, uh, uh, well, and that was that. So that was um, 23 years of hard cover newsletter. Okay, now. Um, when the internet came, we started that way before the internet existed, but when the internet came and email came, we also added to that. We didn't stop the hardcover newsletter. We added to that weekly email tips on customer service, etc. Okay, so now we're making really good friends. Now here's what happened down the road. People say, Keith, I love all this stuff you're, you've telling us about customer service. Do you have any place do you have that all in one place where I can I can get it? Well, so I said, oh, no, let me create a report on putting all of my ideas into one place. And all of a sudden, that report became a book. <laughs> and so that was my very first book I wrote, short book, 100 pages on customer service, how to, how to, how to, how to, uh, how to and uh, what we would do is I, as, as somebody called in, and uh, or they wanted our catalog, we'd throw a book in with the catalog, a few other things, and where they'd get the book, and on the front of the book was a post-it that said, hey, by the way, this is the kind of customer service you should get from us every single time. If you don't get that customer service from us, please give us a call at da 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 And then it said, and then it said, and if you're still not happy, call me directly on my number, da 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 and that was signed Keith Lee. Um, and then P.S., there may be some things in this book that you can use in your business. Um, and so now all of a sudden, you know, I've got this book. The book turned into a product. The product turned into my customer service system. And now, you know, life is good. I mean, just keep looking for things. I mean, so, was, so let's, go back, let's go back to your chiropractor, though. So he started doing the newsletter. Yeah. And by the way, I have a newsletter template service I've been doing for clients since 2010. Right now, I'm letting them have it. They can get it for $59 a month. It's 100% content already done for them, but they get the original file. It's a publisher file. So there is no excuse not to. But he, So he started doing a printed newsletter. How did that change his business and what's happening to him right now during the virus situation? Yeah, well, and in, in addition to the virus, in addition to that, he, you know, I, this guy is just starting to get it. It's so cool. I mean, I get it because I'm on his mailing list. So I get a list from, I get a postcard from him um, earlier this week and says, hey, we're still open. Da, da 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 da. So he's he's using that list that he has of people also. And yeah, his business is he's reminded him that reminded them that he's still open. He's re, and he's got the newsletter coming, and he's still in business. Let's put it to you this way: he didn't make our Zoom meeting <laughs> the other day because okay. he was too busy. Because he was too busy. Okay. Wow. Um, he has patients coming in. You've got to, you've got to create that relationship with your clients with your customers where 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 you're more than just a vendor to them you're someone that they look to for advice as much as you can as much as you can that gets harder in some places let me tell you i bought out 11 of my competitors when i had american retail supply Many of those competitors, because we bought a lot of stuff from evil China, okay, sorry to say that right now, <laughs> but because we were buying product properly, um, a, a lot of those competitors that I bought out eventually were buying some stuff from us. So they were a customer of mine. They saw everything I did. They saw my newsletters. They saw my emails. They saw the the customer appreciation events we did. They saw all of that, and none of them copied any of it, which is why I bought them out for pennies on the dollar. And so in and, other words, and, it wouldn't work. It was too expensive. I don't know how to do it. I don't have any time. There was all sorts of excuses because you laid it right out in front of them. Well, yeah, and and the thing is, is that. And, and it's because why were they doing it the way they were doing it? Because it's the way we always did it. Well, it's the way we always did it. Yeah. 
So, I mean, right yeah. now in this environment, people, business owners have a choice. They can either listen to the, the advice that you're giving and other people that I've been interviewing about this whole series of, of uh, interviews. Um, they can listen to you or they can crawl in a corner and they can fold their hands and they're going to yeah. say, well, it's not going to work. Right now, you cannot go out and create this community of people you know. You can't do that overnight. But if you don't have that now, start doing it as this Start doing it today. Start doing it today. Well, Keith, I am looking at the, the clock. This has been fabulous. The information you've got has been priceless. Your knowledge, your experience, everything is just, I can't thank you enough for taking the time. I and mean, what a gift uh, to give to these people. If somebody wanted to get a hold of you, you know, with management information that you've got or your customer service, how you want them to get a hold of you? Yeah, this, this is probably the the best place to start with me. And I just, just go to online, go to the happy customer handbook.com. That, that's a great place to start because if you go there and get that book for free, there is $2 and 95 cents for shipping. The book is do ask for that. But if you go to the happy customer handbook and get that book there, you'll get an email from me. You'll be on my email list. You can opt out whenever you want, but you'll get to know me on all of my emails is my direct phone number on the bottom of it are all of the emails that you'll get after getting that book. My phone number is on the bottom of it. My email is on the bottom of it. My main website, which is simply keithlee.com, is there. So you can go to keithlee.com. But probably the best thing that you can get from me right now is my book, the, the and go to just simply the happy customer handbook and, and again it'll cost you two dollars and ninety five cents because it is a real book it is a real <laughs> book it's not an ebook and and we'll mail that out to you for uh, for just the postage and the handling of two ninety five so all right well this is Nina Hirschberger until next time remember you are the only real game changer in your business. Take care. And Thank I'll you for to listening you to Megabucks Radio with Nina Hirschberger. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or to listen to past episodes, visit megabucksradio.com.